stop because sh does that mean you should be giving your social media campaign inside your company to an intern? No, no, I, no I don't think is, so. This I is don't the think CEO so. Come down, on, Kent. Only if they're savvy. I mean, we're working with, so for instance, I won't say who because it sounds promoted, but there's a dealership in town and so we're training them in the next two weeks how to engage in social and instead of trying to tell a sales guy that's never actually heard the word Twitter other than on the late show is to take somebody from sales, somebody from used, gently used cars or whatever they call it these days, somebody from service, somebody from parts and, and whoever gets the internet maybe get social and say, here's how you can help forward the brand, but do it from your knowledge base. So there are representatives, evangelists within each division or group and not every jackass that doesn't understand it and is doing it all wrong. So that's what I'm saying. I actually, okay, I, okay. You know, I just I'm, wanna in, interject one more thing because I, I love when Kent shows examples of things that failed in social media, <laughs> like with the Edelman thing. I, I just love that because according to Gartner ad analysts, 50% of social media campaigns fail. That's absolutely true, and that's because we're learning. So in 1994, nobody thought that anyone should have email at a company, that it was worthless, and we should all just, you know, I don't know, call each other and stuff. And what about the fax machine? Come on, Jerry. And then 2005, we all I thought, do remember oh God, the fax we should machine. never have the World Wide Web at our companies because there'd be no value in that. And, and about 2008, too. we said we should never do e-commerce. There's too much risk involved with that. And we're at the same place we are in social media. We should not be surprised we're here. It's exactly the same evolution that we've been through over the last you know, 20 years in technology, honestly. I do want to add to something that Kent said about um, and actually carry about agencies, especially if there's a few of you here who are representing some of those. Um, honestly, it seems like you're helping, but truthfully, it actually makes matters worse if you have agencies engaging on brands' behalf in social media because you have to go through an extended amount of training to make sure that every, and I'm talking big companies, you know, we have 80,000 people at Intel and all the agencies that those 80,000 people decide to hire to do whatever they want. Um, how do we make sure that those agencies know what's under NDA, what's not under NDA, what product roadmap they can share, what they can't share? It actually creates more difficulty than it, that, I don't know, I haven't done the ROI analysis, but it really does create a lot of headaches. <laughs> so Wait a minute, what did you say? <laughs> you didn't do the ROI analysis? I didn't. So. Well, I, I would say, I don't, I don't know about the, uh, the product roadmap NDA thing. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that PR people have, you know, had to contend with for years in disseminating information to various publics, regardless of whether it's social or not. So I don't think that that's probably that big a deal. But I will say, um, since Ken's here uh, representing small biz, um, I think social media is really, really, really hard for small businesses to do because it's very, very time intensive. Um, I, I uh, don't know many who do it well. I think they have to be sort of, it has to be part of their nature. I think it's really hard to train them. You can train people to do mechanics, but getting them to understand the ethos is another whole thing entirely. Really? So, is it really that hard? I mean, I don't mean it to be is. rude or anything. It is. Truthfully. Wait a minute. I know somebody in this room who can tell us that it's hard. Emily, stand up. How hard is it? It's not hard. Oh! oh. I'm sorry. I agree with you. Well, it's it not is. hard for you. I can't change a tire and I can Twitter. I mean, it, really, it is hard. Can hard. Because, somebody tweet that? Because small business people already wear so many hats. They just want to dump stuff off. Actually, business, good, big business people do that as well, and it's a difficult. I, I'm not going to disagree with you. You know, they they just it's want hard to, to like find it time dump, in their day. dump something off. They don't want to add something to their day. You know, it does I, seem like a big risky hassle. And if you if you've got a business that's already in operations, what's the point? I mean, is there especially if there's not a clear ROI? Well, let's give it some perspective. So. Um, so think about this bar. So let's think about Lola's room. Let's pretend it wasn't part of McMenamin's and they wanted to get people here. Um, so, okay, there's one guy running the bar. So he schedules using, say, Dane's Twuffer or Hootsuite or whatever, schedule happy hour specials for the next year ahead of time. And then, and those will automatically feed to Facebook. If you get talk to Alex at Eroy, he'll tell you how to do that, connect the two. And, um, and that sort of thing. And then what happens is you hit send and schedule and the next thing you know, every three o'clock, somebody's coming in and flashing the word, 
shizzle face and then they get a free drink or whatever it is <laughs> at three o'clock. So um, I, not only is that easy, it's absolutely easy to measure how many shizzle faces did we do last month and how many more uh, additional drinks did they buy, etc. So I call it poppycock on all that's not measurable and it's too much freaking work. I wonder if we should talk about something specific and forthcoming in the future still. Uh, so. So this is something Jerry and I discussed a little bit before the panel and something that, that we reported on at Read Write Web uh, at South by Southwest. We, we believe that Facebook is going to open up a fire hose of user activity data uh, for all public activity across the site, just like Twitter makes available now uh, sometime in the next couple of months at their developer conference, specifically next month. So that's gonna be a huge opportunity for marketers to either uh, to exploit that data in in the uh, best or worst senses of the word. And I wonder uh, if you had access to more Facebook user data, what would you do with it? And what would your concerns be? And I, Jerry, you have, oh, you've got a my, strong opinion well, okay, about this. I'm a, I'm a digital libertarian, so I have a huge problem with that. The problem is that advertisers have access to all the information and my digital footprint and whatever my likes and dislikes are. and. I don't have that same transparency back the other way. That's a huge problem for me. And you know, when I when I think about the things that happened, particularly with with Carrie recently, Carrie, you can tell your story at Foursquare. It starts to to get me a little bit scared about the fact that there are companies who know more about me than I do. I, I, How hard I, is that? I, <laughs> <laughs> It's, that's a little scary. And I think that we are gonna come up onto a time where people are gonna opt out, but that's the problem. It's more difficult to opt out than it is to opt in. And I think we should all be in this room concerned about that. I honestly don't see that coming from Facebook. I've worked with them and they're extremely possessive about their user data, um, to almost to a, an, an issue for those of us who are advertisers. But um, I think that we need to get some perspective here. You know, we, we're creating this us versus them situation and um, there is absolutely middle ground. Uh, we have, I'm gonna give you an example so that you can think about it tangibly. Um, I don't know that we would necessarily go and use people's Facebook personal data. Probably somebody at the company would do that. I, I'm not gonna be naive. Um, but that's not something that we would consider a best practice. But what we would consider a best practice is um, a campaign that we did uh, along called Mass Animation, where we used the Facebook platform as a way to interact with animators. And people could submit their animations to this short film. It was um, directed by Yao Lander, who was former uh, CEO of Sony Pictures. And uh, the, the community voted up or down on that segment based on that specific thing. And the entire film was created by the community using the Facebook platform. And yes, it was promoting our Core i7 product because that product happens to be important to animators. It gives them extra boost to be able to do what they do. But we weren't exploiting anything. We were using the platform in a, an interactive and social way. We were creating something of substance using partners to do it. I don't, I don't think that being social and having um, you know, corporate interests are mutually exclusive. 